So, hi and welcome to Night Hacking from Oridef, and we have a new speaker here, Philip Kren. Philip, hi. welcome. Thank and you. could you briefly introduce yourself? So, mm. whom do you work for? Uh, so, I work for Elastic, the mm -hmm. company behind Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, Beats. Probably people know the products better than the company. I, I think so, yeah. Yes, I see that quite frequently, but people are like, oh, there is a company behind uh -huh. that. And we're okay. like, yeah, we're actually, we're more than a thousand by now, so we're not wow. e even that small, um, but yeah, probably we stay behind or under the radar, and as long as people know our product, that's fine as well. Okay, and, and you're based in Vienna? I'm based in Vienna, yes. But the company is also based there, or no, it is we distributed? we are fully distributed. Okay. Um, we are... Like starting with November, we have almost doubled the Austrians. Like we used to be, or I used to be alone for more than a year. Mm -hmm. And I used to say I have my own country, but it's no longer true. Like <laughs> a good year ago, I had, I had two colleagues were at it. Okay. And now in November, we added two more. So now we are, right now we are at five. Let's see how much we're growing. But well, we, we, we're trying to take over the world. Like we have people <laughs> in so many countries and time zones. We really do um, pretty much any country and any time zone. Um, oh. That's which very makes impressive. stuff sometimes interesting, like mm -hmm. calls. Um, when you, of course, um, yeah. for me late is okay, but for example early is painful. Mm -hmm. And I, I have like uh, every four weeks I have a six a.m. call. Um, but yeah, oh, okay. it's you have to do it for the team because it like yeah. as I mean two continents you can coordinate, uh, but as soon as you have three, it will suck Coordinate. for somebody. And yes. we and our team is really distributed. We have like Asia, Japan, China, South Korea. India, Europe, East Coast, West Coast in the US. So somebody okay, will have to suffer. Yes, it's almost and impossible. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the, the joy, but also the pain of the fully distributed nature mm -hmm. that um, we can hire wherever you are and whatever makes sense. Uh, but it's also a bit painful of mm -hmm. implementing some stuff. But we, we've we kind of invested a lot on how to do stuff and make it work for everybody. And it mm -hmm. generally works out very well. Okay. Um, you just need to be okay working from home. And or from your favorite coffee space or, or co-working space. Wherever or you are. <laughs> yeah, or if you're traveling more like me than wherever you are, we are pretty flexible on that. We also have the, like, the people who, who always follow um, like wherever is summer. Mm -hmm. um, I think we had <laughs> three colleagues from Norway, for example. That's a good strategy. Um, <laughs> and Norway, is especially in winter, it's, it's dark and it's generally expensive. So they and cold. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and they generally started to travel the world. So I think they, they went to Malta for October and then they went to Thailand or Vietnam mm, nice. or something like that. <laughs> and then I think they went to the US and uh, mm -hmm. Hawaii for a bit. And then they, they went somewhere else and they, they went around the globe once. And I think one got travel sick then and stayed home and two others are still going on now. Wow. <laughs> uh, but as long as you do your work, that's fine. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's totally, the, that's the future of working, right? Like working distributed in a distributed way. But you, for your role, you also do more, well, more of the traveling in general, and you speak on quite a few conferences, right? Yes, mostly European conferences. Uh -huh. um, uh, we are currently three in Europe, mm -hmm. but one is pretty new, one has family, and... Okay. I'm I'm not that new and I don't have uh, kids at least, so uh, I'm I'm traveling most of the time. Right. Um, so three developer advocates. Yeah, we have three mm. developer advocates. So we kind of have this split. We have the the program and the advocacy role, mm -hmm. and we by now we call ourselves the community team mm -hmm. because we're that's here for the community. That's a good. And that's a nice name. We have the program team. They're more on the organizational side. Like mm -hmm. they will schedule the meetups, or they will send you the swag, or they will right. like run the diversity programs um, or they will just like look who should um, get special swag because they mm -hmm. did some contributions for our next release oh, very nice. and th they run all of these like organizational things in the mm -hmm. background more mm -hmm. and then we have more the advocates who are mostly out in the fields that's people like me right so I always say I, I don't work I just travel right <laughs> I, I just go from places and talk like and talk about I don't talks or <laughs> interviews or whatever <laughs> comes up right and speaking of which here at Eridif you have a talk on a very fun topic of <laughs> GDPR yes I I did talk about GDPR um, actually I think GDPR is a interesting and B it actually um, especially for community it gives you some good tools because mm -hmm. sometimes you have a bit of a struggling with marketing and that marketing wants to do stuff um, especially US marketing they feel differently about privacy right um, and they they think well this is the right way to do stuff mm -hmm. and so far for GDPR you couldn't really argue too much like you could say like hey I think this is not a good idea because we 
maybe we shouldn't um, send everybody an email, but it's like, oh yeah, they they added their details somewhere and now we have their credentials or their, their email address right. and then, then we'll just, we keep sending them stuff because probably they want it. Um, otherwise they can sign out of that or unsubscribe. Mm -hmm. And with GDPR stuff changed a bit, like it, you need to be more uh, planned and like, okay, even though you have the data, you might not be able to use it for right. whatever purpose you have. And then it's also easier to get your data deleted. Right. And I, I feel like it gives you kind of a nice tool to to follow more the European privacy mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. where it's not okay to do whatever you want with data because somebody gave it up and then it's kind of like out there. Uh, it needs to be a bit more strategic and it needs to be uh, more planned. And I mm -hmm. think that's a good idea. That's why I found GDPR interesting. And it also gave us, but probably all the other companies, also like a good like force to review your processes and mm -hmm. what you're doing with data mm -hmm. and how you approach stuff. And I don't think that GDPR is actually changing so much. You need to just think about more the pro about the processes and how to do stuff properly. You can still do a lot of things, mm -hmm. but you, for me, oftentimes it's more like doing it the right way. So, so for example, you're aware of it. Like yeah, you're it both aware, but also like if you, for example, have a booth at the conference and mm -hmm. you you have this lead scanning event because right. you raffle something away. Um, we would al always do it now like um, you actually um, go to a sign-up form and then you can enter your details for the raffle. And then you have a s an explicit um, checkbox where you can opt into communication or mm. not. So we, we will not automatically subscribe you right. to the community newsletter, which I think you would get once a month or so. In the past, it was kind of like the normal procedure. Like as soon as yeah. somebody got scanned, you're right. in there because you gave your data voluntarily. Yes. Um, we didn't tell you really what we were doing with it, but that changed now. So mm -hmm. now you need to tell people, okay, this is what we're going to do with your data. Um, and this is what it's being used for. And if you're not okay, then don't check this checkbox and you have the right. option. And I, I feel like this is kind of the, the better approach and mm -hmm. it, it avoids some problems and that people are sometimes pissed off. Um, it avoids that kind of. So I think GDPR is in that regard kind of a good tool. It of course makes some processes more complicated. On the other hand, um, with all the security incidents and data breaches, I think it's a good thing that you think about like, do I really need to collect the data? Yeah. And if not, okay, then let's not collect all of that data. That makes it easier. Um, and then in my talk, I also um, talked about like anonymization of data or pseudo anonymization. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, you still track some things, but you cannot necessarily get back to the person. So you still, for example, in your logs, you still see how many people were on your site and how much traffic came from mm -hmm. uh, one endpoint, but you don't necessarily see, oh, this is the, the IP or the email address or whatever right. of that person doing that. So you might split it up or anonymize it a bit. Um, mm -hmm. So you can still do the important tasks, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily pinpointed to one person. Okay, or um, get the statistics out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you still, you need to structure it the right way. So mm -hmm. you still... S you don't want to turn everything off and go blind, basically, um, but kind of do it in in a more yeah privacy compliant way right. and do it kind of the right way. Uh, that's why I I find the thing interesting, and it's also a useful tool that you can use internally too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you shouldn't always get out the GDPR hammer and whenever somebody wants to do something, you say like, oh no, not GDPR compliant. Right. Um, it, that's not the idea of it. Um, the idea is more that. Um, do we do that in the right way? And mm. is that even a thing that you should be doing in the first place? Okay. Because sometimes okay. some, somebody has like an idea about doing something and it might not always be, uh, especially or it might not at least for the European sense of doing right. stuff. Um, it might be valid somewhere else, but in Europe people uh, might feel weirdly about it. Mm -hmm. And that's also the nice thing about having a distributed team that you, yes. you have all the perspectives and you yes. know what, what is working in one area or what do people think? And then you need to adjust for that. That totally makes sense. So your talk is um, targeted for developers most. Yes. Okay. So what they need to be aware of right. besides building their software. Because I could, I could imagine that even in Europe, most developers don't even think about that topic, right? They, were, they would be just like, oh, this is technically possible and we have that data. We could correlate it in that way. So let's just do it, right? Right, right. No, so I... I generally cover a bit of GDPR in general, like, okay, these are the yeah. lawful ways to collect the data mm -hmm. and this is what you need to actually use the data. Um, but then also a bit on the technical point of view, what, mm -hmm. what companies have been doing, for example, I think Spotify had this interesting approach um, that probably others are doing now as well, that 
the data of one user is encrypted with one specific key. And mm -hmm. for example, when you want to have your data deleted, they will simply delete your key. Throw away the key, yeah. And then, well, okay, the data is there, and at some point it will probably be basically removed at mm -hmm. some later point. But as soon as the key is removed, you cannot do anything with the data anymore. And they said it's, since they have like hundreds of microservices, they said, and they have probably their own data stores, mm -hmm. they said it's almost impossible to guarantee that when you s tell all your services to delete something, that you really can guarantee that every service worked right. correctly and deleted right. all the data. And it proved to be very hard. And now they just make sure that every user is using the same key throughout mm -hmm. the entire system. And as soon as the key is gone, your right. data is gone and you have solved the problem. Um, things like that. So there are some some good approaches around that, how to, to structure it differently. And you mm -hmm. just need to rethink your processes a bit. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and now for the URDEF conference where we are. Um, what do you specifically like about the conference or why you specifically talk here at this very conference? So I think I'm here for the third time in a row now. Okay. So you're definitely um, a fan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is a really nice conference. Um, it's, it's a bit different than a lot of other conferences because oh it's yes. not focused on one technical mm -hmm. area, which has both its ups or downs, whereas here you have like more this broad set of topics. Mm -hmm. and a lot of the topics are also a bit more like looking into the future, oh aspirational yeah. oh yes. um, things. Like biohacking. That, yeah, biohacking. Right. Or um, I think blockchain is over again. Um, uh, <laughs> didn't see that much blockchain content anymore, but there used to be more blockchain because that, well, had a bit of a hype and then, well, will return probably in a few years again. Uh, but it's more, it's not only what, what are you using today or what mm -hmm. are you doing today, but also a bit the look into the future, like what, what might be coming and what, what should you be thinking about mm -hmm. to. Or what keep in, mo in the back of your head uh, to or in the back of your mind to, mm -hmm. to to see what might come up in a few years or wh where you might have an opportunity to implement something or use something, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting and takes you a bit out of the box of the, the ordinary oh yes. because oh yes, absolutely. a lot of conferences are very much like, okay, this is how to do X better and X is what you're doing every day at work and this is how to improve that or tweak that, mm -hmm. which is also very valid. For example, if you have a talk on... Um, I don't know, these are the 10 things you often do wrong in Hibernate. Um, that's, mm -hmm. that's probably very useful to a lot of people, but it still keeps you where you yes, are yes. right now. It doesn't take you kind of to the next place. It might right. make you better where you are, which is a valuable thing, uh, but it doesn't take you to the next step, basically. And I think that is what is Eurodev doing very well. Um, the venue I'm... I'm not sure. I think I still like the old venue better <laughs> because the, 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 it was the, an old slaughterhouse, mm -hmm. but they, I think they, they're too large now for yes, that venue. And so they, they have, it's more modern now, which, I mean, modern venues are also nice, mm -hmm. uh, but it has lost a bit of its character, I think. Uh, which As always, it has its pros yeah. and cons. Yeah, yeah sure, I there are pros and cons. Like I, I mean, the setup here is very nice. It's very close to train station, the mm -hmm. hotel is across the street. Um, venue is very modern, you have lots of space. Um, the old one was yeah. more crammed than everything, but um, it still had its specific charm. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it's always a bit torn between the pros and cons. Absolutely, absolutely. But I fully agree, especially on the um, inspirational topics, on big variety of topics. So I think that's a very good uh, point and a good motivation for um, our listeners out there to maybe attend the URDEF Erd uh, conference uh, one day. So Philip, thanks a lot for your time and for the interview. Thanks and for having me. Yeah, for everybody watching, well, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.